Hey everybody, we got some questions about what's a good welding machine, a good all-around welding machine. Here at the school, we use, we use a mix between Lincoln and Miller, probably 50-50, but we have some Millers, uh, XMT 350s, XMT 304s. You find them out on industrial job sites. They'll run single phase and they'll run three phase power. You can hook them up to 240, 480, whatever voltage you have. Pretty good all-around machine. If you're gonna invest in a good machine in your shop, Go with the Miller XMT 350, 304, whichever one you can find. They can range anywhere from 1500 used on eBay to I think $8,500 brand new. It's a really broad price range for something you're looking for. Get a decent middle of the road one for, I don't know, three, or $4,000. Or if you don't mind it being a little beat up and, and still operable, go for a $1,500, $2,000 one. That's a pretty small price for a good weld machine in your shop. These Miller XMTs, they're built for industrial applications. They're built for flexibility. They're built to be out in the weather. They're built to be used by construction workers on a refinery turnaround. So they're gonna be plenty durable for your shop. How versatile are these machines, these Miller XMTs? They'll run stick, they'll run TIG, and they'll run wire. Everything you're gonna need around the shop, around the house, these millers will run such a low amperage on a TIG torch, you can weld a bandsaw blade back together, which is 045 thick, 45 thousandths thick. If you need to weld on auto body panels, you can do it if you know how to manipulate your wire. You can get that, get that thing pretty cold. And then it'll run up to, I think, 350 or 375 amps. If you need to weld on something pretty heavy, you got the, the capability to do that too. These inverter machines, they got some technology inside. It's more versatile than most engine drives. Let's say you get an old gas drive, engine drive machine for a pipeline. You can run wire, you can run TIG, and you can run stick off of them, but they're gonna be pretty limited on some specialty stuff. You're not gonna be able to get cold enough for thin metal, and if you're running like a 200 amp, you only have 200 amps. 300 amps is gonna get you way more than you're ever gonna need. Most shops are gonna be set up for 220, 240 volt incoming power. Single phase, these will run off of that. You might not get the full range. You might get 300, 320, 350 amps. And if you're set up for three phase power, three phase 480, they'll run that too. So you plug that in, you get the full potential of the machine. So since I've been at the school, have I had any of those XMTs break? The weak point on the XMTs that I found is the switch, the on off switch, maybe one a year. And a lot of that's how the students treat them. You know, they might shut them off with their foot when they need to shut them off with their thumb. Otherwise, I think we've maybe had one or two fail, but we don't know the history on it. They really are pretty durable. If they can go through the school here, 300 plus students a year, they're gonna work in the shop. What are the limitations for these uh, shop machines, these XMTs, these Millers? Mobility. Once you, you might be able to get a, a, an extension cord for them if you're running two, 220 or whatever, but you're only gonna be able to move it 25 or 30 feet. So if you got something outside the shop that you need to deal with, this probably isn't gonna be the machine. If you're constantly out in the field, unless you have a pretty fair sized generator that you can tie into, they're for shop stuck to the wall use only. You're not gonna be able to throw them in the back of your truck, drag them out to a, a fence post and weld something up. A lot of people, myself included, don't care for inverter machines because I've primarily came up on engine drives. The weld characteristics are completely different most of the time. They've got some arc control settings on these machines that if you get them tuned in right, it'll feel real similar to an older engine drive copper wound machine. So if you're skeptical about how diggy or how aggressive that arc is gonna be, you can tune it down to where it feels like a really nice soft engine drive. I just wanna show you guys some of the buttons on here, show you how easy it is to, to actually operate. So if you look down here, you got your two stick settings. One is for 6010, one is for 7018. Uh, changes the arc characteristics depending on the rod you're using. You know, most farm rods gonna be 6010, 6011, 6013. Got you an air arc setting. I doubt anybody's gonna be doing air arc at the house. Like I would find a different way to cut things, but if you enjoy it, you do you. Got your TIG setting, uh, lift arc, uh, and you got some settings down here for remote controls. They, they come with the remote. You can hook a foot pedal up on them. You can hook a rheostat on them so you can make your adjustments from wherever you're at. Got your wire feed. There's a flux cord, dual shield, and a MIG. And then again, you got some remote settings down there that I don't really, we don't use them much, so I don't know what they do. But then you got, this is that arc characteristics. Stick it on, let's say we're talking uh, 7018. Hit your arc control and you can make it softer, uh, which is smoother bead, or you can make it more crisp, a little bit more diggy. So that's how you adjust that. If you're used to an engine drive somewhere, that's how you adjust that, that art characteristic to the way you like it. Okay, so we, we give you all the pros and cons about these machines, these, these Miller XMTs. Now the most important part is, let's see how it welds.
So there you have it. That's how that machine welds. I don't know, maybe some of you guys can rate my weld off of that machine. Be easy on me though, I know I'm hard on some people. If you got any questions about a XMT304, I don't know, drop us a comment. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell in the corner. Is it in the corner? Where's the notification bell at? Wherever you find it, hit it though.